Welcome back to my channel. My name is Doug and I have another fountain pen video for you today. Today we're going to look at the Jinhao 159 but with a very special nib. The Zebra G Flex Nib or Zebra depending on where you live. I bought both this white 159 and the Zebra G together and the Flex Nib just arrived the other day. Disclaimer here. I'm a real total newbie when it comes to flex nibs. Oh, but are you experienced? But you have to start somewhere, right? I've seen videos where people have put this inexpensive flex nib on a Jinhao X450, the X750, and the 159. So I thought, what a great place to start. You have a $4 pen and a $4 nib. If it doesn't work, you're only out a few bucks. Besides, I really like the Jinhao 159. I have two others, one in black with gold trim and one in black with silver trim. The great thing about the 159 is that they can be experimental Franken pens. Just rip the nib out and put in another. This one has just a generic fully wen medium nib in it right now. And this one has a generic medium nib silver. I just picked those nibs up from Bobby on eBay. The Jinhao X450, X750, and 159 can take almost any number six nib. After watching a few videos on how to put the Zebra G on the pen, I decided to give it a try. I didn't film the actual process because I needed all my brain cells on deck for the operation. But I can describe the process I used. I kind of borrowed a little from one person and a little from another. The trick is to get the nib and the feed to sit together flat. That's how capillary action works on these fountain pens. I'll demonstrate this on another 159. This one hasn't got any ink in it. So, when you have the 159, the nib and the feed are suited to each other. They're matched so that they fit flush. If you can see, that underside right there of the feed is sitting flush with the nib. And you can see sort of the dome of that nib fits the dome of the feed. And that's what allows the ink to flow through it. So what we're going to do is remove that nib and just use the regular Jinhao feed with another nib, with the flex nib. The flex nib, the, Z the Zebra G flex nib, this isn't it, but this is the package it came in. And that says for drawing comics or for comic writing or something like that. So this is the original Jinhao nib that came on the 159, the white one. And here is the Zebra G. Now you can see just from the difference between these two how flat in profile the Jinhao is and how domed in profile the Zebra G is. So the problem is getting that Zebra G to mate up with the plastic feed. And so this is what I did. Again, I'm going to demonstrate on this. I took the nib and feed out. Now you can use an elastic band uh, or a piece of, I use uh, shelving material. I've got an elastic band here. And this one's very easy to get out. Some of them aren't so much. I've just had this one out. So you take the nib and the feed out of the pen and you get rid of the Jinhao nib. Now I'm going to pretend this is the Zebra G for demonstration purposes. So some people on some of the videos suggested taking a pair of pliers and gripping it here with some rubber band on top of it and squeezing to make that dome match the feed. 
Of course, I saw some pretty crushed feeds in those videos. I decided not to do that. I decided to use the heat method instead to heat set the feed to the nib. I put the nib in some boiling water and let it sit there for a couple of minutes. So I had a, um, a heat plate, sort of a cork heat plate in my kitchen. And I took the, with needle nose pliers, took the hot nib out of the water and laid it flat on that cork. And then with some insulating material, pressed the feed down. So this is hot. And I pressed the feed and pushed it down like that and held it until it cooled off. And I did that a couple of times. And it didn't seem to be doing anything. So I, I decided I put both the nib and the feed in the water. And so that's what I did. I put them both in the water for a couple of minutes. I put them both together and pushed on them. I did that a couple of times as well. Then they were cool. This part of the, of the nib was still pretty domed. It was like more like that. It was sitting like that. This part, this is the part I was concerned about. And that's the part I really pressed on. This little section right here that sits up against the nib. That little section of feet. I look at it sideways and there was a gap right in there. And I didn't want any gap. So the more I did that heat setting the, and pressed them together, the more that gap disappeared. You see that even with the Jinhao, you have, you line it up so that it is just right. There we go. And I gripped it together, and then I pushed it back into the section. Now, these Jin Haos have a flat section right there on the feed, and there's a little flat section on the section, and you line that up. Now, because the it was still pretty domed up at the back, it sat up like this. So I had to line up the nib, and I'll talk about that in a second. And to line up the nib, Again, I'm holding on to this with some rubber, some elastic, or uh, some I use shelving material to protect the feed. And I keep my thumb against this curved part to line it up. I pushed down with my index finger on this side to get that nib inside that collar and then pressed it down. I had to do that a couple of times because this was the difficult part. Go back to the zebra. There are two notches, right there and right there. I'm going to get black on my fingers. On the Zebra G nib. Those notches have to line up with the first fins on the feed. And there's no, it slips around. So getting that correct was a little bit difficult. I found by putting an X-Acto blade right in there, it lined things up until I was able to grip onto it and push it into that feed. This is very sharp as well. So you have to grip it with the gripping material. Get that lined up, push it down into the section so that the tail is sitting down. Make sure that that's all lined up and push it in. I can tell you I made about three or four attempts and it was still misaligned. If it was misaligned, I had to pull the whole thing out and start again. Um, because there was uh, no way to adjust it once it's already in that section. I inked the 159 up with the Roshizuku Takisumi. Takasumi. It's a beautiful charcoal black ink. And once I had the ink, of course I use a syringe to fill up my converter. I turn the pen upside down and rotate the piston of the converter to run ink down into the nib. Now, one of the things about the Zebra G is because it's a flex nib, it's gonna eat up a lot more ink than what that feed is designed for. It's designed for the regular nib of a Jinhao 159, which doesn't take as much ink as this flex pen does, or can. And so I sort of primed that feed. Now I'm going to push it down. I'm turning this down 
and maybe you can see the ink starting to well up on the tip. There, you can see it. Just on to almost until it's dripping. So I'm going to try on camera here. Only if you promise not to laugh. Because I'm not very good at this. I've never done it before. I've only uh, experimented with it just about an hour ago. And we're going to give it a try. You can see how you have to go slow. Now, what I've discovered here is that upstrokes are the most difficult part and the downstrokes end up being easy, but you have to go slow so that that feed can, can stay with you. But what you can see is that it is very, very wet. This is still just drying over here. I'm getting some nice sheen out of this Rubu Shizuku as well. But uh, it comes out very, very juicy. And if you run it too fast, it will railroad. But I've also found that lightness of touch is sort of everything. And this is only after, what, a couple of hours of me uh, trying this. So uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. I'm finding that you can write normally with it as if it is a very, very extra fine nib. So that's almost my regular writing speed with a fountain pen. So what you have to watch out for is that, and you've probably heard that on the mic, that that's very, very scratchy. It's like uh, scraping the page with a sewing machine needle. Um, but if you dig into it and you dig in on an upstroke, it will actually puncture the page and then shoot up like a catapult, like an ink catapult, and shoot uh, wonderful Rorschach tests of ink. Tell me what you see. All across your page. It might look artistic, but uh, it kind of surprised me the first time. So let me see if I can inflex this a little bit.
Well, not bad for my first attempts. So, I thought I'd pass that little bit of knowledge that I've just gained on to those of you who have thought about it, but thought you couldn't do it. So for not more than 10 bucks US and a little bit of fiddling, you can play too. Doesn't matter if you're a calligrapher or not, I don't think. Uh, just make doodles, they're endless fun. So again, if you like this video, please like and subscribe and hit that bell if you want to be notified when I post another video. Until then, Thanks for watching. And that's all she wrote.